Today we're going to learn what is normalizing Blender and why it's useful to use the normalized node in geometry nodes. So let's see. Let's get the camera, the light, open a new tab and select the shade editor. I'm going to select the material view, press N to hide this and add, for example, a checker texture. Let's go into here and select like this. Now I'm going to press Ctrl T with not wrangle able in add-ons to add these two nodes because what I want is to select object. So I have this texture around the object. Now, if I press N, what you can see here is that the scale of this object is 1, 1, 1. However, if we have a texture applied in object, in texture coordinates, and we try to change the scale of this, you can see that we are distorting the texture. So here is not the same size than here and here. We lose these perfect squares. So to fix this problem, we need to normalize these vectors, the scale of this object. How? Applying the scale. So if I select this and I press Ctrl A and I select a scale, I'm going to convert the scale in one like you can see right now. And now we can see the texture perfectly projected. So what we did, it's called normalize, because we converted the scale to the value of one. This is normalizing in edit mode. And with this texture, you can see an example why it's useful to do it. Another example, if you want to see it, for example, I'm going to say normal view, is for example, if we apply a bevel, if we select bevel modifier, now we have a perfect bevel because we have an scale of 1. So all the edges are perfectly bevel. However, if now I try to change the scale of this, for example, something like that, you can see that the bevel mm, looks weird. So if you want to fix the bevel, we need to normalize again this object. We need to select it, press Ctrl A, and select a scale. And now we get back the bevel perfectly apply. So once again, you saw another example when it's useful to normalize an object in edit mode. Now let's go to geometry nodes and see how normalize node works. So let's create a new profile and I'm going to delete this and add a simple curve line. And let's connect it here. So now we have a curve line of one meter in Z. Now what I want is to select direction and here I can offset the direction of the endpoint. And here I can move the star. I'm going to leave here the star. But as you can see here, we have the length of this vector. Remember, what is a vector? A vector is a straight line between two points. So here I can say, I want this vector longer. For example, three meters. And I can change the direction with this vector direction. Okay, now, if I want to change this to one value, what I have to do is to add set position and in position, I'm going to reduce again position. So now it's like not doing anything. But if we add this node called vector math and select normalize, what it's going to do is to convert all this, the distance, the length, equal to one. So let's check it. Let's select normalize. And now you can see that the length is one value. It doesn't matter if I try to increment this. Look, it doesn't change. Only if I do it negative, go to this direction. Also, if I try to move this, always is one. If you want to see it, for example, I'm going to select zero, zero and select one. So now is facing this direction. And in theory, it's three meters. So if I disable this with M, you can see that it's in this direction and it's three meters 0.2. So three squares and two decimals. However, if I apply normalize, what I'm saying is, okay, I don't care how long you are. Now you're going to be between zero and one. So length equal to one value. That's what those normalize, convert any vector in a scale of one value. Let's see another example. Here I have an old project 
of another tutorial in my channel called Basic Vector Math in Geometry Notes, where I teach how to add and subtract different vectors to see the result. So basically, we have two vectors, the blue one and the red one. And the yellow one will be the result of the operation using vector math with the blue one and the red one. Now it's in zero, 0. As you can see, for example, the blue one, this is the position, is in one x, so one value, and one value is z. So this is the position of the blue one. And the red one is only one value in x. So this is the position. Now, if I want to modify the yellow one, I can use vector math in add and in the first input, insert this vector. So the yellow one will be the same than the blue. However, if I add another vector, this one, the result is this one. Why? Because we are adding one value in x. So before we were here, however, if now we take this and we add it here, so one value in x, the result is there. So this is how it works, adding two different vectors. And if we change this, you can see always the result. And the same subtracting. is the same, however, when we added the first vector, if you subtract one vector, basically, you are using this in the opposite direction. So before it was like that, and now is in the other direction. So this is the result. Okay, why am I explaining all this? Because, for example, if I select add, and I want whatever I add, for example, let's say something like this, I want the result to have more control to normalize it, I can do it adding after this another vector math and select normalize. So like we saw before, now the result always will be one. It doesn't matter if I change this, if I select another axis, if I change this one, always the result will be one. So more or less will be always like in a cycle of one, whatever we do. So normalize is useful to have a control of the result of different vectors. We get the same direction always, but we have a better scale to control. So now if we want to control the scale of this, what we can do is to add another vector math and select a scale. And now we can start scaling this. So it's like having a control with the result of any operation. And you can apply it with anything, like subtracting, also multiplying, because for example, if I mute this and this, you can see that when we multiply, for example, right now, we are multiplying this one with this one, you can see that this go really far away. However, if I add normalize, now it's here. And with scale, I can control the length of this vector. So now, if I select 5, basically, what I did is that thanks to these nodes, if I mute this, for example, now the length is really long. I don't know how long is it. But if I want to control it and say, I want only 5, then I normalize and add this here. So more or less, it's 5, because as you can see, we have 5 squares. So I know exactly the length of this vector, thanks to normalize and scale. And you can apply it with any vector math of these ones. Add, subtract, even so, divide. If I want a scale of 2, I select 2. So whatever I do, always will be 2. Now let's come back to geometry nodes. I'm going to delete this cube and add a cube mesh. Let's connect it and add more vertices. So let's add more vertices. And now what I want is to set the position of these points from the origin, the center. So like before, let's connect again position. Now nothing happens because this is saying every vertex be in that position. However, what do you think will happen if we add here a normalize vector math? Because if we leave it like that and we, for example, try to move this, we're pushing the position of every point in one vector, right? For example, now we are moving everything 
in these three vectors. So more or less in this direction. However, if we select normalize, let me select zero first of all, and select normalize, look, what just happened? We get an sphere. Why? Before, after. Let's think. If I select, for example, this view, as you can see, all the position of every vertex is in one value. This is one value. As you can check the squares, this is one value. And the same for every vertex in the middle. So when we add normalize to a square or any geometry, basically what we are saying is like, hey, the position of every one now will be one. That's why we get this shape. However, if we decrease the number of vertices, we are losing the sphere. Because to create a sphere, we need a lot of vertices. So more vertices you add, more you are allowing to get this sphere. And if we leave it like that, every point of these ones is in one value. Look, I'm going to mute it. For example, if I mute this and I increase this and I activate this, every point of these ones is in one meter of the center. We cannot see it real well, but imagine that this is one meter. So more vertices we add, more we can see how the vertices start to move from one meter of the center, of the origin. And if you want to convert this in a square to do a morphing, what we can do is to use mix vector. So now here we are saying use this position. And if we move the factor to the other vector position that is 0, 0, 0, basically what we are saying is every vertex be in the position 0, 0. That's why it disappeared. However, if we reconnect this here without the normalize, remember, if you get lost, it's the same like doing this. So if we connect it here, we can switch between this and the original square. If you want the square of one meter, then here select one meter. So now we have this morphine. Without normalize, with normalize. And this is the same principle that I was explaining to you before with the vectors. You can try this experiment with different meshes. For example, now I'm using an star curve. So the original mesh is like this one. Now I'm using the position. And if I go to normalize, every vertex is going to one meter of value. Even so, if we use an object like a Susan, now I'm using the original position. And if I try to normalize all the position of the vertex, we are going to get this shape. So it's trying to push all the vertex in one value from the origin. By the way, if you want to learn how to do this perfectly, CG Matter have a better tutorial explaining how to make it perfectly round. So I recommend you to watch it. Of course, there is a lot of ways to use normalize. So don't worry, in this channel, we're going to see more examples. And it will be really useful when we work with simulation nodes. So if you want to learn more, give a like, subscribe, and see you in the next video.